Hello, welcome to Appliance Master Live Take Two. <laughs> Had a um, technical difficulty just a minute ago, but it seems that's resolved. There, um, uh, I'm Bill. Uh, again, joining me again is Kari. Hello, and then today we're going to be discussing some tips and tricks to keep your dishwasher working properly. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we've mentioned in previous videos that are always helpful to keep in mind and, you know, put those reminders out there for some new viewers if we have them. Yeah, and um, so dishwasher long life and good cleaning for years all starts with having it installed properly, something that's often overlooked. Mm -hmm. um, I think because um, a dishwasher installation can be expensive. I mean, it probably starts around $150 plus mm -hmm. parts. Some people charge more. So a lot of, um, uh, I, mean, I guess a lot of people try to install it themselves. One of the common things is um, making sure the drain line um, has a high loop that goes as to the height of the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, um, if it's not installed properly, the water can just drain out, which leads to like, you know, if you don't have water in the tank, it's not gonna clean well. But, um, and also, sometimes when they install the drain lines, people put like severe bends in the lines, mm -hmm. which may work fine at first, but because the hot water passing through it over years will soften the hose and, and can encourage it to kink more. Mm -hmm. And in those kinks, you'll trap debris, and the machine will have a, will struggle draining, and typically uh, it'll have you know dirty water all the time in the machine, which mm -hmm. is a, would be a problem. Now, would water lying in the bottom of a dishwasher be a sign of that? Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, the dishwasher will probably have a little bit of water after every cycle, but it, you know it'll be relatively mm -hmm. clean water. It's you know usually from the last rinse. So, but if you you know if it's uh, if it's if you have a strong odor, and it looks cloudy, then that could be a sign of a poor drain or clogged filters. And mm -hmm. uh, and then what kind of material would you suggest customers have for their drain lines? I know they have plastic, copper, typically, steel hoses. Well, typically now most um, dishwashers come with a drain hose. We recommend that you use the line it comes with. Mm -hmm. If you have to extend that, there are, uh, you, you, if you have to extend a drain line, you should put in a larger diameter. You can't go smaller because the smaller mm -hmm. diameter, you know, people will put a hose inside a hose and get the extra three feet, but that's that's not going to work right because it would be too much back pressure and too much possibility for not expelling all the water. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing on installations people overlook is they, uh, we recommend that you have a, a stainless steel mesh, like a flexible fill line, because they're the less like, least likely to leak and um, it's, it's flexible, so if the machine vibrates or moves while throughout the years, it'll be fine, as opposed to like mm -hmm. a rigid copper line where um, any kind of movement could lead to the leaking at the connections to that. And What about um, installing flooring around it? Yeah. Did you recommend putting it underneath the dishwasher or just trying to yeah, well, make sure that it's thin enough? Well, sometimes when our, when, if you have a new kitchen floor put in, uh, we recommend you, put, you mm -hmm. pull the dishwasher out and put the flooring under the dishwasher, lower the legs and put the dishwasher back in. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people will put in, uh, you know, they'll not put in new floors, they'll put in a subfloor and tile, which can be, uh, which if it's high enough, it would make it nearly impossible to take the machine out. And if you have a wood or Formica countertop, mm -hmm. you can probably lift it up a half inch or so, you could probably play with it. But a lot of people now have, um, you know, granite or stone countertops, which they're, they're impossible to lift off the countertop, so. No flexibility. Can, yeah, it could be a real chore getting your dishwasher out. Mm -hmm. Something to consider. But, and good flooring people should know this too, but we, I mean, we still see it a lot, so mm -hmm. it, it happens. What would another thing you would suggest to keep an eye out for? What, in installations or mm -hmm. just in general? Just in general, maybe like the filter or? Well, um, people don't, you know, it's like if you think of your washing machine and your dishwasher, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I find people don't generally um, think about cleaning those, but you have to mm -hmm. clean the dishwasher, especially. The dishwasher is going to have leftover soap, and you know, which you know it builds up. Uh, if you if you have harder water and don't have a softener, it's going to build up more quickly. Um, and just from use, the food that goes in your dishwasher, mm -hmm. it uh, it generally gets macerated, chopped up, and but a lot of things, you know, f high fiber things foreign things that shouldn't be in a dishwasher, paper, plastic, they'll get, um, they'll get stuck or in, uh, in, inside filters or screens like this particular, this, um, 
dishwasher. It has a in t this goes it goes this way, right? And the washer arms on top. Mm -hmm. But the when you take it out, there's a I don't know if you can see that, but this has a um, a pretty fine mesh filter on the bottom. So food, the washer arm is going to pull water in against this. So there's going to be debris, food particles, everything stuck against this. Soap scum will build up on this too. So. Um, pulling this out, washing this with soap and water, maybe you have a little toothbrush or a plastic brush mm -hmm. to clean it, even a sponge, just to get that clean. And again, it depends on what you're washing and how often. So just these kind of kind of things that you should keep an eye on. This, uh, this um, screen is a little coarser, and this is just gonna keep all the big items from going mm -hmm. into the pump lower. Um, so this is, uh, I don't know what model this is, I forget off, but all dishwashers have some kind of similar filtering operation and as luck would have it stuff things get past that things get past that so here's a uh, here's a basic basic wash arm and uh, the, so the water sprays out of these holes right and what will happen is you'll get food like, and uh, orange or you know pits mm -hmm. uh, st all kinds of things that aren't you know that are hard so they'll get stuck in here and uh, if and again, this one only has this one has six jets on it, so you clog two or three of these, and it's only washing half as much. This one also has a washer on it comes out, same kind of deal. This one only has two jets on top, so these can get clogged as well. Just something to look at. A lot of dishwashers now have two and three of these wash arms. Mm -hmm. So one on the top, one on the bottom. Yeah, I mean if you uh, typically these aren't like terribly hard to take apart, but if you uh, sorry, I found a toy. So, I'm sorry, I got distracted from it. So, anyway, uh, our technicians can clean those out. You can clean mm -hmm. them out if you feel uh, adventurous enough to pull yeah. it out. And if you run into problems putting it back in, you could always call us, and we'd be more than happy to come out and take care of that for you. Sure. Um, well, after you do the clean the debris off those screens, mm -hmm. the parts you can't get to inside the the pump, and there's places you can't reach. Mm -hmm. There are products that you can get. Um, and we, we stock these as well. Our technicians have these. There's a dishwasher magic, dishwasher magic or a fresh tablets. I think that's for a dishwasher. Mm -hmm. And um, these will help remove the buildup, soap scum, mm -hmm. get rid of odors. And it all it all helps to have your dishwashers coming out better. Yeah, makes cleaner. sense life. What are some other things? I think one of the ones we touched on previously was making sure you're loading the dishwasher properly so yeah. that you know, we don't have any stacking and yeah. Um, I th Nesting think, involved. Um, generally speaking, you can always um, look at your uh, user's manual, mm -hmm. which if you don't, you probably don't know where it is. But you, like I said, you can do it. You can find it online by searching your model number and then type in user's manual. And you mm -hmm. can, if you're, if you want to find out more about loading your dishwasher. But basically, what is uh, good to remember is that uh, the wash, the wash action generally comes from the center out. So if you put things. You know the same way mm -hmm. um, you may want to consider putting plates like this way and then that way you remember that the washing action is coming from the center out on all the washrooms the lower the middle the upper mm -hmm. one so um, very exciting stuff right Got yeah and then as far as detergents go what would be the kind of detergent would you, that you would recommend you know like they have liquid detergent still the powders and then also like the you know the pre-measured tablets that you yeah. put in I think um, um, I'm not terribly fond of liquids because, and you got to be careful that liquids d don't introduce like bleach into mm -hmm. the, because um, a lot of, a lot of cleaning products are, you know, they, there's no more phosphates, there's no more chemical action, there's uh, enzymes are with, that go in and, um, you know, do eat, the cleaning. They, you know, eat, they, uh, it, I don't want to say eat, that probably sounds bad, but you know, they break down the food particles. Yeah, so they, so you also need some food particles to uh, to um, mm -hmm. activate those enzymes, but um, also you, uh, putting your having your rinse agent dispenser full goes a long way too. That'll in the in the in the end of the wash cycle, you know the, the that chemical action will sort of have your dishes repel water, so it tends to leave them uh, spot free. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then as far as like the load size, would you recommend people wait until they have a full load to run the dishwasher or it doesn't really matter? Well, again, that's per a personal choice. Like me, if I had a dish and a fork, it's going in the sink. I don't know. But it's like a, if you're, um, you can run small loads because even small loads, the average, last uh, study I saw, 
the average water amount used mm -hmm. for washing dishes is like 21, 23 gallons, where a dishwasher is going to use like three gallons, three to five gallons. And uh, so even if you have a small partial, it's probably better than washing them by hand. And uh, But you can also get dishwasher, like if you are a single or just a couple and you just routinely have a few things, you can get a dish uh, dishwasher that has drawers. So you can have like Fisher Paykel is one brand that has two mm -hmm. separate drawers. So your typical your typical meal will fill up that drawer easily. So if that's routinely going to happen in your house, you might want to consider something like that. Yeah, well, those are some great tips. And then you know, if you have any tips for us that you've found helpful over the years, please send them to us so we can include them in our next video. Then I think the next time we talk, we're going to be discussing some spooky sounds that happen with dishwashers oh, in the Halloween. spirit of Halloween. Nice. Up, so. All right. Well, appliancemaster.com, mm -hmm. you know where to find us. Thanks for tuning in.